Chapter 9 Catherine felt as if someone had punched her in the chest. The intense pain was suffocating, especially when Ethan's indifferent gaze swept past her without lingering for a second longer. James hurried toward Rebecca. Headquarters has given the order to hand this project over to Rebecca. A shudder passed through Catherine before she turned to face the other woman. Cathy, don't get upset. Rebecca staggered backward as if she was utterly shocked. Fortunately, Ethan had his hand on the small of her back. This scene only aggravated the situation. Rebecca, what more do you want? You've already stolen my man and now you're trying to snatch away the project that I spent so much time and effort on. Are you really that envious of everything I have? How ridiculous. Since when was young must allow your man? James scoffed. You're quite something, aren't you? You've been pestering young Master Lau in the past, but he hasn't shown any interest in you at all. Besides, do you think you could have gotten the project if young Master Lau hadn't put some strings to the boss of the said company? James, don't. Rebecca signalled the man. I insist. You're the fiancé of young Master Lau, so it's only right you take on the project. Do you think so too? Catherine stared at Ethan, who had been keeping quiet all this while. As a matter of fact, Ethan did pull some strings to introduce her to young Master Clark. However, the two men were not particularly close either. It was Catherine who took the time to meet up with young Master Clark throughout the entire month so that they could discuss the plans over and over again before finalising the terms. Ethan frowned slightly. Young Master Clark did agree to meet you because of me. James sneered. <laughs> Everyone knows this, but someone just insists on humiliating herself. I don't believe this. I'm going to Dad. Catherine drove to the office to look for Geoffrey Jones. Dad, why did you hand over the hotel project to Rebecca? You know that I've spent a lot of effort on this particular project. Geoffrey, who was in the middle of work, was displeased at the woman who had barged in out of the blue. I'll assign another project to you. What about the Campbell Villa project? This small-scale project is more appropriate for Rebecca. She's inexperienced in this industry, so it's better if she starts from the bottom. Geoffrey slammed his palm on the table. She's your elder sister, and you should show her some respect. No wonder your mum has been saying you were getting out of hand. Catherine was startled. Her voice was full of grievances when she spoke next. She stole my boyfriend and now she's stealing my project too? How can I possibly show my respect to that woman? She didn't steal your project as every project belongs to Summit. I'm the president and I can assign any project to anyone as per my wish. Besides, Ethan was never yours. He chose your elder sister. Words escaped her lips before she could stop herself. Ethan wouldn't have chosen Rebecca if you didn't transfer 80% of the company's shares to her. Your sister has suffered unthinkable pain throughout the years. Give her your assistance whenever you can. Also, apologize to her for what happened yesterday. The man said, I can't do that. She replied through gritted teeth. Geoffrey slammed on the table once more. Leave if you can't do that, you ungrateful brat. You're nothing without Summit. His angry words slapped her across her face like a gust of brutal wind. Her cheeks reddened with mixed emotions. Fine, I'll leave. I don't believe a highly qualified designer like me with a first-class architect certification can't find a job somewhere else. She returned to her own office after that. With a heart full of grievances and anger, she packed up her belongings into a cardboard box before heading to the entrance. Numerous people murmured as she walked past. I heard she was fired by the president because she was mean towards first young lady. How petty she must be to push aside her own sister. It's rumoured that first young lady was abducted when she was young and it's only recently that they reunited. She must have suffered unimaginable pain during those years. Exactly. Besides, first young lady isn't only nice but easygoing too. She even bought us dinner for working overtime last night. 
This woman is getting what she deserves. Chapter 10 Catherine forced out a self-deprecating smile. Ever since joining the company, not once had she pulled rank. She always worked with much caution and conscientiousness. She would be the last one to leave the office every day, working overtime and treating everyone else with respect at all times. It was unexpected that things would end up like this. After leaving the company, she walked around the area alone, without a specific destination in mind. During that time, Ethan called her a few times, but she refused to answer his calls. She headed back to Jadeite Bay after buying some snacks and ingredients from the supermarket. As soon as she stepped foot into the house, Fudge came forward to greet her while wagging its tail in the air. She patted the cat on its head and murmured, Fudge, you're the only one left that likes me now. The cat replied. It closed its eyes in satisfaction, giving the woman full permission to stroke it. The corners of her lips twitched into a smile. I bet she wants some dried fish snacks, don't she? Sean was not home even in the afternoon. Both the woman and the cat enjoyed a simple lunch. Then she threw herself onto the couch and began searching for work on her laptop. 10 p.m. at night, Sean returned to a brightly lit living room. Over on the couch, Catherine was in the middle of feeding Fudge a small piece of chip. Is this the kind of trash you feed my cat when I'm not home? His handsome features coldly scanned the table full of snacks. There were bags of chips, spicy fries, cheese, chocolate biscuits. A tiny smear of chocolate was even found on Fudge's whiskers. A real tiny bit! She gestured with her thumb and index finger, showing just how little it was. Fudge keeps pestering me to give her some, so I had no choice but... What does a cat know? Shouldn't an adult human like you know better? Annoyed, he swept everything on the table into the trash can. Don't eat trash like these in the house anymore. I don't like the smell. Catherine looked at the snacks inside the trash can with a grimace. Oh God, she could not fathom how a person could actually be disgusted by the smell of snacks. What a weirdo. Nonetheless, reality forced her to twitch her lips into a flattering smile. You're right, Shawnee. These are trash. I'll listen to you and stop eating them. Take a look at yourself in the mirror and see how pretentious you are. The man could not be bothered. He picked the cat up and retreated to his bedroom. Shawnee, you had a long day. Are you hungry? Should I cook something for you? I make really delicious pasta. She shamelessly followed after him in tiny steps. He paused in his tracks. The food served in the restaurant he went to earlier for the business meeting was so spicy that he barely ate any. His stomach grumbled a little upon hearing her suggestion. She seized the man's brief hesitation and offered right away, saying, I'll make some pasta right now. Go on and have your shower. He looked over his shoulder to throw her a quick glance. The soft orange light shining on her from the top made her appear lovelier and warmer than usual. Fifteen minutes later, Catherine showed up by the door of the master bedroom, holding a bowl of pasta. She knocked on the door, but there was no reply. Left with no better choice, she opened the door slightly. Shawnee, the food's ready. There was no one in the room. A faint outline of the man's silhouette could be seen on the frosted glass of the shower. Dazed by the sight, she could not help imagining how the man would look without clothes on. Both her cheeks reddened at the creation of her imagination. Ah, oh, hold on. She should not be thinking about this. Just when she was about to turn around and leave, the frosted glass door was pushed open. Sean stepped out of it, undressed. However, there was a towel that was casually tied around his waist. His hair, still damp from the shower, sent droplets of water trickling down his chiseled jaw, all the way down to his chest. Her gaze slowly moved downward, following the motion of the water droplets. She gasped. It was anticipated that he had a nice build, but she did not expect his body to be this good. He had the perfect, wheatish skin, not to mention the muscles that made up his body. 
The man was not exaggeratedly muscular like a bodybuilder, but every part of his body was defined. The fit body exuded a manly charm that only a matured man possessed. She lowered her gaze further and noticed his perfectly toned waist. Have you seen enough? The man's husky voice suddenly rang in her ears. Catherine gathered herself instantly. She could feel the heat burning in her cheeks. She pretty much grew up seeing Ethan's impeccable handsome face. How could she let herself be carried away after just looking at another man? Useless. Uh, I'm here to deliver your food. Hurry up and eat it or the pasta is going to clump together soon. She put the bowl away immediately. Just when she was leaving the room, she walked on the edge of the mat and tripped. She lost her balance and fell forward. In the span of that few seconds, she thought she had grabbed hold of something, but still fell face down to the ground nonetheless. Fortunately, she landed on the mat, so it did not hurt too much. When she opened her eyes again, the first thing that entered her sight was the man's long legs and...